All right, here we go. The first of two chats with our NHL analyst, Frankie Corrado. And this seems like a home run to me, Frankie, with Bertuzzi. He was excellent for Boston in the postseason, playing alongside David Pasternak. Uh, now I have a chance to play with an incredible player in the top six in Toronto, no matter who it is. How do you like this move for the Buds uh, you know, on a one-year deal, too? It's a pretty low risk. Yeah, listen, I, I love the move for the Leafs. I think it's an excellent fit, and, and Tyler Bertuzzi is going to bring an element that the Leafs desperately need, and I would call it like he's a skilled player who plays very hard. He can put the puck in the back of the net. He scored 30 goals two years ago. He was an excellent playoff performer, like you alluded to, five goals in seven games for the Boston Bruins this past season. And the element that he's going to bring that maybe they've been lacking a little bit in the past is the fact that, yes, he has that skill, but he's right in the middle of everything. And he might not throw a lot of hits. Like, if you looked at the game sheet after, you're not going to see a ton of hits from Tyler Bertuzzi, but you're going to see a lot of puck battles won, a lot of hounding players on the forecheck, a lot of coming up with loose pucks. And after he comes up with those loose pucks, he will be able to keep up offensively with Matthews, with Marner, with Nylander, whoever he's going to play with, and he's going to find a way to contribute offensively. It's a really nice blend of skill and tenacity, something the Leafs desperately needed, and it's an excellent fit on a one-year deal. See where it goes. I imagine for Tyler Bertuzzi, he looks at it and says, I have a great opportunity here to play with two of the best players in the world. Salary cap is going to go up. I I've never played with you know this kind of quality of players for such a long period of time. I can cash in here pretty good. So I think it's a great deal for, for both parties, and it's going to be an excellent fit for the Maple Leafs. And you get the feeling Max Domi was thinking the same thing. Maybe wasn't getting what he wanted long term. Signed the one-year deal with the Leafs. Comes to Toronto where he grew up. Now, my question for you is, Frankie, how do you like the makeup of this forward group now? You add Bertuzzi, you add Domi, you lose Ryan O'Reilly, Michael Bunting, Nola Chari, Alex Kerfoot. How, how do you like uh, the forward group as it stands right now? Well, I would say this. The, the way the forward group stands now, you know what everyone's role is going to be. You know what their identity is going to be. And I think that's very important. There were times in the past for the Leafs where you see a player come in and you're, okay, is he a skill guy? He's not overly skilled. Is he a physical guy? He's not overly physical. You're, you're thinking, what are these guys exactly? Well, with these two players that come in up front, Bertuzzi, we know what he is. He's hard skill. He's competitive. He's going to be able to put the, back, the puck in the back of the net. And for Max Domi, it's speed and it's tenacity and another player who has had playoff success. I think that's something to watch out for as uh, Brad Trilliving makes these signings. And when the Maple Leafs play at their best, they're a very fast team. Like every team needs that something that makes them hard to play against. When they were at their best, they were very fast. They were a smothering team. And Max Domi brings that kind of speed. And I like the fact that he's going to be one of those guys, whether it's after a whistle or during the play, like he'll be in the middle of everything. He plays physical. He's not afraid to stand up for his teammates. That kind of stuff goes a long way. They needed speed in that center ice position on the third line, if you want to call it that. But he is a, a versatile player who can up and play up and down the lineup. And they needed that tenacity. They get it. Not to mention the fact that they bring in Ryan Reeves, who, you know, if you've been in an NHL locker room, you understand the importance of having a, that so-called glue guy, that guy that brings everyone together in the dressing room, on the bench, that guy that can let you play a little bit with your chest puffed out. And, you know, I, I was very lucky to play with Ryan Reeves for a very short stint with the Pittsburgh Penguins. I can tell you he's coming in as advertised, and a lot of the players in that dressing room are going to be very happy to, ha to have Ryan Reeves on their team. Uh, and going back to Max Domi, 17 years since his father, Ty, played for the Maple Leafs. That means it's been... 16 years since they canceled uh, win, lose, or tie on the NHL on TSN. That was for the camera guy. Um, okay, after day one, Frankie, it seemed like Leafs Nation and a few, maybe a few of our panelists on Free Agent Frenzy were somewhat underwhelmed with what the Leafs had done. And you mentioned Reeves, uh, you know, but he is older. And, and then, of course, John Klingberg, and he's got his defensive, defensive deficiencies, just as I have my speaking deficiencies. But now that you've added Bertuzzi and you've added Domi, overall, what do you think? What grade would you give Brad Tree living over the, over the weekend in free agency uh, in his first run as Leafs GM? It started slow. And you know what? The, the grade improved in day two. Like when you address needs that the, that the team is looking to address, you have to say that's a passing grade. And that's exactly what Brad Tree living deserves for the moves that he's made. 
You're not going to supplement a lot of skill, which you already have in the lineup, with more skill. You need to supplement with different pieces, something that gives you a different identity, a different look. And, you know, we, we've talked about it. Like, there's no guessing as to what these players do, what they bring to the table. You go up and down the lineup, and, and John Klingberg is another guy. Like, you know exactly what he's going to be. He's an offensive defenseman who's going to be somewhat of a liability defensively, but when used properly on the first power play unit, like, he can have a big-time impact. I would imagine you're rolling into day one of the regular season with John Klingberg out there, power play one, next to Matthews and Marner, and that's going to give you a different look, a look that the Leafs haven't seen yet in the past. And as far as up front, you know what it is. It's speed. It's tenacity. Everyone knows their role. Everyone knows their identity. And players lower in the lineup, they should be able to take a little more ownership of what their roles and identities are and contribute to this team. It can't just always be looking at the big boys to score the goal. Like, there, there's, there's enough lower in the lineup now that should be in the fight when it comes playoff time to be able to contribute. And, of course, like, the, the top players are going to have to lead the way. That goes without saying. But it's just a different look lower in the lineup. I like the fact that there's speed and tenacity and that competitive spirit added with this team. I think one thing that Leaf fans and non-Leaf fans might be asking right now, Frankie, is what about the salary cap? Um, True Living still has to extend Matthews and Nylander. you got to sign Ilya Samsonov. You wonder if a buyout of Matt Murray might be necessary in that second buyout window. Maybe a trade. Based on what you've seen from Tree Living so far, do you have any guess as to how he might handle all of this? It is extremely complex, but I will say this. Tyler Bertuzzi, Max Domi being on one-year deals, advantageous to not have that money sitting around on the books when you're looking at extensions for Matthews and Nylander. And Bre like Brandon Pridham, this guy literally wrote the book on the salary cap. He knows exactly the ins and outs, and they've exhausted all options, and they've probably looked at every kind of exit valve when it comes to this kind of money coming off the books, this money coming on the books. So they, they know what they're doing. They have some time before they need to settle everything up. And the fact that they went with short-term deals on the players that they brought in allows them to allocate the money as necessary for the players that need the extensions. And yes, you mentioned Ilya Samsonov. At some point, we're going to see what kind of contract he gets. It's going to be very important to keep that number manageable for the team. Uh, but Brandon Pridham is one of the best in the business when it comes to the salary cap, and they know exactly what they're doing and how things need to look. Nice to have a guy like Pridham in your front office. Uh, Frankie's going to be back a little later in the show. We're going to talk about some of the things the other Canadian teams did over the weekend. That will be later on this edition of SportsCenter.